All right, today we're going to look at section 4.2, which is linear functions and slope-intercept form. So I have four lines graphed at the top of the page, and we're going to discuss these. <coughs> you can see in the first graph that you have a line that is rising from left to right, okay? So remember, we read graphs left to right, so left to right. So this line is rising from left to right. So if the line is rising from left to right, it has a positive slope. So in the second graph, we have a line that is falling from left to right. So this one is falling or going down. I'm just going to use L for left and R for right. So it is falling from left to right. So this one has a negative slope. In the third graph, you have a horizontal line, which we would think that is a great road, a perfect floor, has just, you know, it would be exceptional. So we can have roads like this, we can have floors, that's what we want our floors to look like in a house. So we have a nice horizontal line This is considered to have a zero slope. It does not rise, nor does it fall left to right. Now when we get to the fourth graph, we have a vertical line. Okay, a vertical line. No roads in the real world are gonna be vertical. It doesn't have slope. So vertical lines, have an undefined slope. And we'll get to the algebraic reason why, or the mathematical reason why. So undefined slope. All right, so the slope of a non-vertical line, notice that we're not even gonna talk about the slope of a, non of a vertical line because it has an undefined slope is the ratio of vertical change to the horizontal change. So the vertical change, that's going to be your y, your y-axis going up and down to your horizontal change, which is your x-axis, which goes left to right between two points. So our points we're going to label generically x1, y1, x2, y2. And then your slope formula, which we did a little bit of slope about finding rise over run, is your vertical change, which is your rise, and it's the difference in your y values, divided by your horizontal change, which is your run, and that's a difference of your x values. So you're going to subtract your y values and subtract your x values, and if you notice, you pick from the same point. So we have the y2 and x2, which is from the same point, and then we're going to subtract the y1 and x1, which is from the same point. It doesn't matter which point gets labeled um, sub 1s or sub 2s, but you just have to pick from that same point on the top first and on the bottom first. So slope formula. You need to have this memorized. <clears throat> And I know this is kind of silly, but you can think of this as the yum-yums on top of the picnic table. Okay? I know that's silly, but it works as far as memorizing it. So yum-yums on top of the picnic table, which would be the legs of the picnic table or the X's. So some way just to try to get, help you remember that. Right, so now we're going to find the slope between two points. So the first thing you need to remember is you need to know your slope formula. So we're going to write it down. So m equals y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. 
And then we're going to label our points. We can call this x1, y1, x2, y2. And then you just substitute into your formula according to how you have labeled. So it's important that you label. That way you don't make a mistake when you're substituting in your values. So my y2 is 4 minus, because that's in my formula, and then y1 is 7. X2 is negative 2. See, I came back to this point where I picked the 4 the first time, so that's important. And then minus, because that's in my formula, and then X1 is negative 3. So 4 minus 7 is negative 3. Negative 2 plus negative 3. If you have, excuse me, negative 2 minus negative 3, if you have two negatives, that's going to make a positive. So negative 2 plus 3 is 1. So the slope of the line that goes through these two points is negative 3. So this line would be going down left to right. So we get to number 2. Again, we need to know our formula. So the more you write it, the more you practice, then you'll have it memorized. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Label your points x1, y1, x2, y2. That keeps you from making a mistake when you're substituting in your values for your variables. So my y1 is, or excuse me, my y2 is 1 minus my y1 is 1. And then x2 is negative 4 minus x1 is 3. So on top, 1 minus 1 is 0, and negative 4 minus 7, or excuse me, negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. So 0 divided by negative 7 is 0. So what type of line has a zero slope? So that, that's a horizontal line. Because you can divide a number into zero, you can't divide by zero. So zero divided by negative seven is zero, and a horizontal line has zero slope. Let's look at number three. Again, it's important to practice writing your slope formula so that you have it memorized. And then it's very important that you label your points so that you substitute incorrectly. So y2 is 1 minus, because that's in my formula, and y1 is 0. Divided by x2 is 8 minus, because that's in my formula, and x1 is 5. So we have 1 minus 0 is 1, 8 minus 5 is 3, so the slope is 1 third. So this would be a line that is going up from left to right because it has a positive slope. All right, last one. So we have these two points. We're going to write our slope formula down. And we're going to label our two points. And then we're going to substitute in to our formula. So y2 is 2 minus y1 is 2. And then x2 is negative 2 minus x1 is 2. So 2 minus 2 is 0. Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. So 0 divided by negative 4 is 0. So there is a slope that is 0. Some more terminology. A function whose graph is a line is a linear function. So one way you can remember that is the fact that you can see the word line in the word linear. So that should help you remember that the graph of a linear function is a line. You can also represent a linear function with a linear equation. And there are actually several different forms of a linear equation. We're not going to deal with all of these today, but we're going to go ahead and talk about them. So the more you see them, maybe you will remember them. Standard form of an equation of a line comes in the form of 
AX plus BY equals C. I have seen this in other textbooks where they use capital AX plus capital BY equals C. So in case you see that form, these are the same. Slope intercept form. Everybody's pretty familiar with slope intercept form. Y equals MX plus B. You could also use function notation and have F of X equals MX plus B. Then there's point slope form, which is Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. And then the horizontal form, now think about a horizontal line. It's crossing the y-axis, so it is actually y equals b if it's passing through a point a comma b. So the b is the y-coordinate. And then you have your vertical form. Your vertical form is crossing the x-axis, so it is x equals a, just where a is your x-coordinate. So you can remember the horizontal form because it crosses the y-axis. So it's y equals, and then the vertical form, the vertical line crosses the x-axis. Oops. So it has to be x equals. Then you have um, some things to learn about the different forms. Today we're going to focus on slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form for a non-vertical line. Again, we're not talking about x equals, but we're talking about the horizontal line or the line with a positive slope or the line with a negative slope. The form is y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope. That's your rise over run, and your B, or 0 comma B, is your Y-intercept. So this would be your, if this was B, this would be your 0 comma B. That's your Y-intercept where it's crossing the Y-axis. And then your slope would be rise over run. So we can actually find the slope of my little picture if we just say that these are 1s. We're going by ones. So we're starting from this point and we go up one, two, that's our rise. And then we're going to go one, two, three for a run. And since we're going up and to the right, both of those movements are positive. It's up one, two, run one, two, three. So that would be two over three for the slope. So actually, if I gave this numbers, the y intercept would be zero, negative two. If I put numbers to the grid on the graph. You can use slope-intercept form to write equations of the line. Slope-intercept form is especially easy for graphing the line because you're only required to know two things, and that would be your slope and your y-intercept. All right, so the first example is that we're going to write an equation of a line. They're giving us the slope and the y-intercept. So when I see that I have the slope, and the y-intercept, then I should think slope-intercept form. Which is y equals mx plus b. You could use function notation. And then you're going to substitute in the two things that you know to have your equation of your line. Your equation of the line is still going to have the x and y, but you have to fill in for your slope. So we know the slope is 1 fifth. So in place of that M, I'm going to put 1 fifth. And I know the Y-intercept is a negative 3. So in place of that B, I'm going to have a negative 3. Nothing else changes. You bring down, you have Y equals MX plus B. It just happens that your plus B is a negative number. So plus a negative 3 would be minus 3. So there's your equation of your line that passes through the point zero negative three that has that y-intercept and has a slope of one-fifth. You can pause at any time and see if you can 
write the equation of a line and then resume and see if you did it correctly. So in number two, you have the slope and you have the y-intercept. So you use y equals mx plus b. And if the slope is 6, then that's going to go in place of m. And 5 is the y-intercept because this is 0 comma b. So you have y equals 6 times x. And it's a positive 5. So there's your slope-intercept form. Now sometimes you're given a graph to write an equation of a line. So they don't tell you the y-intercept. They don't tell you the slope. They show you and you find it. So the first thing we can find is the slope. We know that that's rise over run. So we're, we're going to start. Remember, we read left to right. So we're going to, this is the point that's furthest to the left. So from here to move to this point, I am going to go down one, two, three. So down is a negative movement, and then to the right one. So down, one, two, three, right one, right is a positive movement, so that is negative three over one, so the slope is negative three. Now what is the y-intercept? It is crossing at four, this is your y-intercept, this is your b, and then you take your slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, and you're just going to substitute in those values. The slope is negative three, and the b is 4, so you have y equals negative 3x plus 4. Again, you can pause anytime you want to to see if you can write the equation of a line. So in number 4, we're given a picture. We have to find our slope. So we start it from a left to right, and you can go from any point that you want to. We have a point here, a point here, a point here. So I think I'm going to go from this one all the way to this one, just because this is hand-drawn and I don't exactly have a grid, but I do know where I'm going to get from here to here, from the x-intercept to the y-intercept. So that's our b, so we know b is negative 3. We'll just go ahead and put that there. All right, so from this point, I'm at negative 6. I'm going to have to go down 1, 2, 3, and I'm going to go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So down 3, right 6. Down 3 is negative 3, and right 6 is positive 6. So that's going to reduce to negative 1 half. So down 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So negative 1 half. So if I go from this point to this point, I'm going to go down 1, and I'm going to go right 2, negative 1 half. So then I'm going to use my y equals mx plus b, and I'm going to substitute in my slope for m and my y-intercept for b. So I get y equals negative 1 half x, and that's a negative b, so minus 3. You could even go from this point to this point. You would go down 1, 2, and then write 1, 2, 3, 4. Negative 2 over 4 is negative 1 half as well. All right, now we're going to practice writing equations in slope-intercept form and finding the slope and the y-intercept. So this is going to require those skills of moving things from one side of the equal sign to the other. So just like if we were solving an equation has to be legal, if we're subtracting, we would add. If we're multiplying, we would have to divide to move it. So those inverse operations. So if we want it in slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b, then my goal is to get this y by itself. So the first thing I need to move is this positive 5x. How do, I, how do I move 5x to the other side? Well, if it's positive, then we would subtract 5x. So those are going to add out. 
your negative 4 times y is going to come down. Your equal sign is going to come down. Now, remember, we're trying to get an mx plus b, so we're just going to kind of read backwards. So negative 5x plus 16, because it's a negative 5x, and that's positive 16. It would be the same as 16 minus 5x, but we're going to write it in mx plus b form. And then to move that negative 4 times y, the inverse operation is to divide. So we're going to divide everything by the negative 4. These cancel. Your y comes down. Negative 5 divided by negative 4 would be a positive 5 over 4. We're going to leave that as a fraction because of rise over run. And then positive 16 divided by negative 4 is a minus 4. So what we have to pick out is our slope. So this is y equals mx plus b. Our slope would be 5 over 4 because it's in front of the x. And then our y-intercept would be negative 4. So you could write negative 4 or you could write it as a point, which would be 0, negative 4. So there's a little bit more work involved, but you're still building those skills and using those skills that we started the semester with. All right, let's look at number six. If we want to get this in the form of y equals mx plus b, we have to get y by itself. So how would we move this 3x that's being added to the 2y to the other side? Yep, you would subtract it because you've got to make sure that they add out. So 3x minus 3x. 0, so you bring down 2 times y equals, remember we're trying to get mx plus b, so the x comes first, negative 3x, positive 18, so negative 3x plus 18, and then to get the 2 times y to have y by itself, you're going to inverse it, which is the inverse of multiplication is to divide, and you divide everything by 2, those cancel, and you end up with y equals negative 3 divided by 2 times x. And 18 divided by 2 is 9. So picking out the slope, the slope is the number in front of x, so that's negative 3 halves. And then the y-intercept would be 9, or as a point, it would be 0, 9. Number 7. All right, let's see. I'm going to go to the back because these have fractions. And if you want a full lesson, you need to be in class, but this is enough for you to go back and review and look at how you rewrite an equation in slope-intercept form. So when we have slope-intercept form, we want it to be, have integer coefficients as much as possible. So we're going to um, see if we need to change anything with these fractions. The first thing I'm going to do is... We can use that same technique that we got rid of fractions if we wanted to. We might do that in a minute. Let's just start with our basic moving things from side to side. So we want y by itself. We want to get it in y equals mx plus b form. So the first thing I need to do is to add the 3 fourths x to both sides. So that's going to add out. You're going to drop down your 1 half times y equals, remember we're getting it mx plus b, so the 3 fourths x comes first, and then minus 1. So, let's see. How did we get rid of a fraction that was in front of a variable? 1 half times y. Starts with an r. We use the reciprocal. So we're, the reciprocal of 1 half is 2 over 1 which means we have to multiply everything by 2 over 1. So I'm just going to put everything in parentheses on this side. So that's going to cancel. Y is going to come down. And then you're going to apply the distributive property. So 2 times 3 fourths x. I'm just going to write that for right now. We'll reduce that in just a second. And then 2 times negative 1 would be negative 2. So here you have a fraction. So you can use your calculator or know that 2 goes into 2 once, it goes into 4 twice, so we can reduce our fraction. And then we have 3 over 2x 
minus 2. Picking out our slope is the number in front of x would be 3 halves, and the y-intercept is negative 2, or as a point, it's 0, comma, negative 2. So that's one way you can just deal with the fraction at the end. I will show you another way to get rid of the fraction that we've done before. So look at number 10. I would just kind of like to get rid of the fractions from the beginning, just not to have to even look at them or deal with them. So that requires you to be able to come up with the least common denominator, because we're going to use that as a technique to get rid of the fractions. So what would be the smallest number, or least common multiple denominator, same thing, except for we're not going to create a common denominator, we're going to use this as a way to eliminate the fractions. What would be the smallest number that 6 and 3 would both divide into? So we'll call it least common multiple. So 6. So if we want to get rid of the fractions from the beginning, we pick out the least common multiple, and then we're going to multiply everything by 6. And we can put it over 1 when it's next to the fractions. And now you can see that the 6s cancel, and you're left with x plus 3 goes into 6 2 times. 2 times 2y is 4y equals, and then 6 times 12 is... 72. We still have to get it in the form of y equals mx plus b. So we're going to subtract x. That goes away. 4 times y equals negative x plus 72. Then we're going to divide everything by 4 so that we can get the y by itself. That cancels. And then we have negative 1 fourth because there's a 1 understood. Because if we have to graph this later, then we want to be able to pick our, pick our slope out from the equation. And then 4 goes into 72 18 times. 4 goes into 7 once with 3. 4 goes into 32, 8. So there's our slope-intercept form. Pick out the slope. That would be negative 1 fourth. And the y-intercept would be 18. Or as a point, it would be 0, 18. So that ends the lesson over slope-intercept form. We will be graphing lines in the next section and looking at some other forms.